you have three zones of respiration. To optimize recovery, it's important to know which zone is your home or which zone to home in on in order to bring on the benefits of recovery. Zone one is the abdominal zone. Now, you don't breathe into your abdomen. You're only breathing into the lungs. But when we talk about zone one respiration, we're primarily talking about the diaphragm's descent and ascent through the rhythm of respiration. And as you breathe in, the diaphragm should contract and mobilize downward. And as it presses downward, your guts and all of the myofascial layers that surround your guts should distend, they should expand, as well as your pelvic floor. And so that includes your transversus abdominis, your obliques, your rectus, your erector spinae, and all the many layers of the pelvic floor. If you live in a way where you're always armored or bracing or tight in the many abdominal layers, or perhaps you have scar tissue that impedes the full range of motion of the respiration, then you're not really living well in that zone one. And it might be very hard for you to induce the relaxation response or to relax deeply. Because if zone one is limited or if it's restricted, you're gonna become a zone two breather. In zone two breathing, we primarily use a combination of the diaphragm plus the intercostals. The intercostals are the muscles that line the rib cage. And in a thoracic breather or a rib cage breather, what you see is an opening and lifting of the rib cage and very little movement in the abdomen. Whereas in an abdominal breather, you see a big belly expanding and then puddling in. So zone two respiration is more sympathetically arousing. It is more activating. And of course you need this when you're doing heavy lifts or in sport or play or dance because you have to brace your midsection to, say, to keep your lumbar spine safe and you'll recruit more of the thoracic breathers to do your activating moves. Zone three respiration is the stuff that happens above the rib cage. It's our collarbone and neck muscles that we recruit in case of emergency. That kind of a breath. And you'll see people literally stuck in a startle response. Um, I grew up with an asthmatic mother and my mother has a habit of being frozen in a clavicular breathing pattern or a zone three breath pattern. And so when we're in our most heightened sense of activation or anxiety, these breathing muscles take over. And that's great in case of emergency or sudden burst of energy that we need. But primarily, we want to try to live in a blended place of zone one, zone two for our day-to-day -day activation. And then if we really want to relax and sedate ourselves, zone one is the home you want to roam in.